Queen's elected officials who represent Astoria shared the good news on Friday, December 15th, that their advocacy and efforts to allow trucks to remain on the Brooklyn-Queens Expressway have been approved. On November 12th, the Department of Transportation, responding to a May 2017 written request from the officials, began construction work to lower a portion of the roadbed so that large trucks can safely pass under four different street overpasses and in this way remain on the BQE instead of detouring into the neighborhood as they have been doing for decades now. The work is expected to be completed by the end of this year. The announcement was made during a street press conference on Astoria Boulevard, hosted by Assemblymember Aravela Simodas and attended by Congressman Joe Crowley, State Senator Michael Gianaris, Councilmember Costa Costadinidis, Paul Caras, Acting Commissioner at the Department of Transportation, and representatives from local community groups and organizations. All officials applauded the Department of Transportation for responding and launching the road work to allow large trucks to remain on the BQE and cheered the end of gridlock, window-rattling noise and pollution on Astoria Boulevard and the surrounding roads. Officials also thanked Governor Andrew Cuomo for playing an important role, as they said, in the decision to move forth with this important road project, which, as they stressed, will improve the quality of life for Astoria residents. Referring to Governor Cuomo's input, the acting commissioner for the New York State Department of Transportation, Paul Karras, noted that, quote, Governor Cuomo is leading the way on transportation improvements across the New York State, enhancing safety while supporting economic growth. These improvements on I-287 in Queens will speed commerce and reduce track traffic on local streets, in turn improving the quality of life for New York's families, end quote. Congressman, happy holidays. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well. Thank you. Good news today. This is wonderful news for the community here in Woodside, uh, sorry, sorry, Astoria and Woodside. Yes. Uh, the lowering of this highway, uh, this parkway, uh, to enable these trucks to stay on the highway and not invade our communities is great news for everyone, including the truck drivers who prefer to stay on the highway too. I mean, it was like, I think it was towards the beginning of the year when we were here again. Yeah. I, I cannot believe that it happened so fast. I mean, does that make you very proud? Well, it's, it's, it's been a work in progress for some time now. And uh, I think uh, getting the uh, cooperation of the governor's office was critical. And uh, we really appreciated the Governor Cuomo to to understand what the impact of this would be on people's lives. And I think he finally understood that and got it through, and the commissioner's presence here says that all. And talking about the impact on people's lives, let's talk about this tax bill that is going to affect uh, New Yorkers, people yep. from New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, you want to explain to, uh, yes, explain to us briefly why is such a bad idea? Well, I think this bill is egregious for several reasons. One is it makes an incursion into our national debt by another two billion dollars to give a tax cut to the wealthiest in our nation and to corporate special interest groups, uh, and at the same time is very, very um, uh, seriously flawed in uh, taking away the ability for states like New York and New Yorkers in New York to deduct state and local taxes uh, from the federal taxes. It's a, it's a taxation on tax already paid. And um, it's, it's, it's just not a fair bill. It's, it's not something that, uh, it'll, it'll increase taxes on the middle class by uh, up to 80 million households. Uh, and uh, all to give the wealthiest amongst us uh, a tax break. And I think it's unconscionable. Now, I know uh, the Republicans uh, have not consulted the uh, Democrats on this, but did the Democrats try uh, to get uh, their input in this? Well, we did in the committee uh, hearing on the bill, well, there was not a hearing, on the markup on putting the bill forward, but there were no hearings held on this bill. There was no request for input from Democrats. We tried through the amendment process. Every amendment that we offered was shot down. We were denied the ability to offer over 30 amendments. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the, the use of a legislative tool known as reconciliation, uh, which is a budget tool to require only 50 votes in the Senate, was a clear indication that the Republicans had no intention of ever including Democrats. Uh, had they not used that uh, procedure, 
they would have been forced to uh, produce a bipartisan bill that would require 60 votes. So from the very beginning, they weren't interested in working with us. Well, Marco Rubio uh, has not voted on it yet. Do you think he might be able to save the bill? Well, he has voted to move it forward and he in the past. The question now is, I think the latest move, which was very blatant, uh, to increase uh, the corporate rate uh, by 1% to, from 20 to 21%, um, uh, and the newest bill, uh, right now the corporate rate is around 35, 36%. Uh, it would go to 20%. Now the move to raise it to 21 uh, would cut the, um, uh, the, the marginal rate for the most wealthy from 39.6 to 37%. Even Marco Rubio knows that's blatant in terms of, of a, kleptocracy, a kleptocracy, uh, really stealing from the poor and giving to the rich. He's saying that more needs to be done uh, for the child tax credit. Let's see if he has the guts to stick it out and vote against the bill. I'm not so sure he does. Senator Janaris, congratulations. Uh, this has been a long battle for you, and today we can celebrate uh, your achievements and Aravela's achievements and the rest of the elected officials. It's a great day, and it's a great testament to when we put our minds to it and we roll up our sleeves and we keep advocating we can get it done. You're going to see and hear while we're doing this interview all these trucks that are rolling past us. Two of them are coming right now. This is what every day is like for the people that live in this neighborhood, the people that try to drive on Astoria Boulevard. And in just a couple of weeks, we won't have to deal with it anymore. It's going to be a, a wonderful thing that's going to enhance the quality of life for everyone that lives around Astoria Boulevard and for everyone that's driving. This is good even for the truck drivers because they don't want to come off and get back on the highway if they don't have to. So it's a simple solution. They just drop the road enough to fit the truck's uh, under the overpasses, and we're going to get a tremendous amount of relief for this neighborhood. And how much uh, did this uh, project cost? Uh, it was a little over $2 million, I believe, to do it. And uh, Not bad. In the context of the state budget, that's $160 billion. It's a, a small amount for um, the value it's providing and the value to the environment, too, because as these trucks go into the community, that ruins the air quality here, too. Now that they're going to be able to just fly right by, stay on the highway, we won't even know they're there. It's going to be very, very beneficial for everyone that lives in their story. Now, uh, I would like to talk to you about the tax bill because it's going to uh, Ooh, affect, affect New Yorkers. Um, the governor has been uh, very vocal about it. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? It's horrible. And it's a dagger aimed right at uh, states that did not support President Trump politically. And that's the worst thing about it. The states that are going to suffer the most are New York, California, Massachusetts, New Jersey, all the places that did not vote for him that are Democratic states are the ones going to get punished the worst. Um, and it's, it's the worst kind of governing. I've not come to expect very much from this man, but uh, he exceeds my expectations every time in terms of how bad he is and how bad the policy he enacts is. It's, if it's allowed to pass, and we're fighting it very hard still, uh, it's going to end up reducing the property values of people in these states, it's going to increase the tax burden, and it's going to blow a very big hole in the budgets of all these states that are affected. And, however, President Trump keeps <laughs> insisting that he's lowering the taxes for the middle class. He's lying. <laughs> every, every independent organization that has looked at this has said that the taxes for the middle class are going up and the taxes for the very rich are going down. It's the opposite of what we should be doing. The wealthy in this country own more of the wealth than at any time in, in, in probably hundreds of years in this, in this uh, country and in, in the world. This is happening in a lot of other countries. We're at a point when working people need to get a leg up, not be punished more. And wealthy people need to chip in a little more to help make that happen, not take more money out of the pockets of the middle class. So it's actually the opposite of what the president is saying. He knows it, but he lies every day, so this is not a surprise. And he also um, claims that uh, by lowering the taxes for the corporations, it will create jobs. But nobody can uh, be certain that, going, that corporations are going to invest their money in jobs, right? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If you want people to have more money in their pockets, more money to spend to generate activity in the local economy, then give, actually give the middle and working classes a tax break. Give them the help. Right now, we're punishing them and we're giving even more money to those that have it the most. And what you have to understand is when you're trying to pump money into the economy, you want people to spend the extra money they have. People who are middle class, people who are working class, if they have extra dollars in their pocket every month, they're going to spend it on necessities, on food, on uh, even on going to the movies and doing things with their families. That goes into the economy. Someone who's a billionaire, if they have an extra billion dollars, they're not necessarily going to do those things. They already have all the food they need. They already have uh, all the entertainment uh, expenses they need. 
that money ends up going elsewhere. Sometimes they move it offshore uh, to protect it from taxes even more than they're already being protected. So we need to put more money in the pockets of people who would spend it and people who need it, not in the pockets of those who need it the least. Anything else you would like to share with us? It's the holidays, so always <laughs> we want to wish a Merry Christmas to everybody, a Happy Hanukkah. The holiday season is a wonderful time, and we got a nice gift today with this, uh, with this change to the highway. Thank you, and Merry Christmas. You too, Helena, thank you. Aravel, as I was telling Costa, it's freezing today, but this news brings us warmth. <laughs> it certainly is a wonderful Christmas present for this Astoria community. Uh, as long as I've lived here for 39 years, it's been plagued by the noise pollution, the environmental pollution, the quality of life issues that come along with large trucks barreling through our neighborhoods. And finally, finally, the end is in sight. And because of the governor's very very meaningful um, investment in this community in this urban part of New York City uh, you know we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a better quality of life and I thank him for his work and for his vision and for his willingness to invest uh, some of the funds in in Astoria mm -hmm. now how, how how long is it gonna take before we're going to start seeing the, ch the change well you know the construction's already underway it's not gonna take that long I, I, I the Department of Transportation will certainly give us a timeline and because the governor does something called design bill mm -hmm. any overruns that might um, happen actually are billed to the contractors so they have obviously an incentive a financial incentive not to make the drag the, the um, project out very long um, so I'm sure it's going to be done in record time uh, what I'm hearing is sometime in uh, the beginning of the new year mm. we're going to see the changes now of course you have to change people's habits yes. so they're used to getting off and getting back on so they're going to have to realize that they could stay on the roadway and I think that will take some time but um, you know our nightmare is coming to an end. Let me ask you something. Uh, are they going to, going to have special signs that say no trucks on Astoria Boulevard or are they going to are they going to still be allowed to travel on Astoria Boulevard? The larger trucks, because again, there's only going to be provided a certain amount of clearance. It's not an infinite uh, clearance because there are overpasses there and, you know, there is infrastructure. So I can imagine that some might have to get off, but uh, certainly the majority will be able to stay on. Of course, Senator Gennaris uh, passed the legislation that allowed the smaller trucks to stay on, and that's why we don't see many smaller trucks. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to have the signage about no trucks allowed because sometimes they're making stops in the community. Mm -hmm. However, for the most part, the, the truckers who are trying to get from point A to point B uh, in, in, uh, in safe time, we will not do this, uh, you know, roundabout route. They'll stay on the, the okay. major thoroughfare. It's faster, it's quicker for them, it makes sense. Yes. And uh, finally, let's talk about the tax bill and uh, your thoughts as uh, far as how it's going to affect the uh, New Yorkers. Any time that anyone has to pay more taxes, it certainly hurts uh, the middle class and the, and the lower, um, lower uh, earning individuals. And we have to be very cognizant that these tax changes affect everyone. You know, they, it, it will affect homeowners, it will affect the middle class. And I, I've, I understand that they've tweaked it, they've changed it to allow a certain deduction up to $10,000, but there are so many New Yorkers, Astoria residents, uh, Queens residents, who pay a lot more than that, $10,000 in state taxes, and now they won't be able to deduct the full amount of those taxes from their tax returns. So it's gonna, you know, unfortunately, uh, the, the plan right now, if it actually passes, will be much more, much more costly to us as average citizens. And, you know, government has to, of course they has to tax its, its uh, its constituencies, I mean, the population, to provide the, the public works like the construction we're talking about today. But it has to be done so fairly, and you can't pit one state against the other. I will tell you, I recently read an article that said the 10 highest, um, the, the 10 states that will be mostly affected, and New York City was number one. Yeah. New York State was number mm -hmm. one, just because of our high income earners here. Yeah. Final thoughts. I want to wish everybody a very happy holiday, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, all the best in the New Year to, um, to their families. And uh, today was a present. It really was a present for Mario Cuomo, and I'd like to thank him. You know, he's qu from Queens originally, and I know that uh, he understands how meaningful this is to all of us. Thank you, Arabella. Keep up the good work, and uh, Merry Christmas to you and yours, and Happy New Year. Thank you. 
Uh, the news that we, uh, despite how cold it is today, the, the news that we've gotten is going to warm our hearts. Because uh, we know that, uh, you know, we're very grateful that finally we're going to see large trucks be able to stay on the highway and go to the BQE from the bridge and not have to get off on a story Boulevard any longer. You know, these truckers uh, had, you know, are coming, passing through our community. They race down a story of Boulevard to get onto the bridge to stay on their business, right. which makes our, our streets more congested, makes our tra intersections more unsafe for everyone involved, our cyclists, our pedestrians, our, our other drivers as well. And the pollution is incredible. I mean, we've been standing here for almost an hour and, and I'm already getting sick from the pollution. The pollution is terrible. I mean, you know, I watch so many families try to cross the street here at Astoria Boulevard and, and 31st Street and, you know, taking their strollers around the 18-wheelers that are stuck in the intersection or seniors trying to get through it's terrible. It's terrible for them. Having, and then when they belch out a big, a big thing of smog right in their faces, you see the whole family coughing together. It's, it's horrific. So finally, we're able to see the large trucks after decades of this being a problem, you know, making sure that the large trucks can stay on the highway and, and stay on their business, do what they have to do, but this community doesn't have to you know, be injured by their presence. Yes. Costa, thank you very much. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. Uh, Elena, thank you. Ha everyone, Merry, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and, and thank you for another great year at Actina. We love you. Thank you for, for being the great advocate for the Greek community that you are. Thank you.